there. This is Prophetess Wendy. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're joining us for the first time, I would like to welcome you and to say that we love you so much with the love of the Lord. This is the true prophet. I speak nothing but to speak the guide, which to speak knowledge that comes from the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You are more than welcome to join us. If you have clicked by mistake, you're more than welcome. Hallelujah. They say the steps of the righteous are guided by the Lord. Wait and hear what the Spirit has to say to you today through my mouth. Hallelujah. Today, I'm discussing one of the most important topics. You know, it says that, why do we have to wait if God can do it now? Why do we have to wait for something that God can do it now? You know, I've heard people singing beautiful songs to say, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. You know, that is a very, very beautiful song. And you're asking a very good question, you know, because there are people who sing songs that has motivated us, that has inspired us about waiting. So today, I wanted us to focus more on the scripture that says that um, why do we have to wait, you know, because you need answers, hallelujah, you need answers, and I'm not going to give you my peace of my mind, because you might want to move away from this channel, if I can tell you exactly what I'm thinking, so it's good, I tell you what the word of God is saying, uh, when you read Psalms 27, uh, verse 14, it says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart, and wait for the Lord, amen, there is this particular scripture that I love from the book of Isaiah, it says that those who wait upon the Lord, they will never be disappointed, you now understand, me? when you wait upon God, God, you will never be disappointed. But the thing that discourages us is because during the time when you are waiting, you don't want to wait. Hallelujah. Don't want to wait. I remember when I finished school, I was carrying my qualification from Boston College. You know, I could not wait to start working. You know, when you go to college, you go to university, when you've got that qualification, you just can't wait, you know, to, 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 to start working or to have that internship. But all of a sudden, you are applying, but you're not getting a job. But yet you're a child of God. When you pray, you feel the presence of God, but nothing is happening. And then now you are being taught, you know, in the church to say, wait upon God. You know, as much as I was waiting upon God for the past 10 years, I remember it took me 10 years to have a permanent position. I was not waiting. Hallelujah. I was busy moving from one company to the other. Why? Because during the time of waiting, you want to do something with your own life. But yet you are speaking to this particular God. But God says, wait, wait. Why? Because he knew that after 10 years, he's going to give me a permanent job. But can you imagine the level of stress of me not understanding the time because the bible says in the book of ecclesiastes there is time for everything there is time for everything you know sometimes when you reach that age when you have finished school as a woman you reach that age of 21 where they give you the key and permission as parents to say, hi, now, no, Magrita, Magrita, now you can date, Magrita, you are now free to do whatever that you want to do, only to find no man is coming your direction. Yes, you are dating, but it, now it's been too long. You know, sometimes you come to the presence of God, you are a good child of God, you come and pray in the presence of God, but you've been moving from one relationship to the other. Right now, as I speak, you've got a lot of ex-boyfriends. I'm telling you, it's not easy, it's not easy to wait. Why? Because during the time of waiting, some of us, if we knew that our husband were going to come and marry us at the age of 30, we could have waited. But the thing that makes us not to wait is because we want this thing now and we want it to be done now. And when God says wait, he doesn't want you to act or to do your own things. He wants you to trust him, to say this thing is going to be done. There are people whom God kept them childless, but they were not aware you know, when I was reading uh, the story of Hannah, the Bible says God kept her childless. It was for, for God's own good and own purpose why she had to be kept childless. But the person who was kept childless was restless because she didn't understand. Why do I have to wait to have kids? Here I am. I'm married to this particular man. There is another woman by the name of Penina, but Penina keeps on having children. I think the thing that also put pressure on us is to see people that we went to school with, is to see people that we, we, we grew up with, you know, same ages as they are achieving things that we're supposed to achieve and we don't understand what is it that for us it has been put aside to say for you you're not going to have a husband at this particular time but if you don't understand you keep on dating why because we are trying to say hey, you know what i understand the waiting part maybe i should have god in the process and just do my own things you see if you when you are waiting you need to be patient the bible says be strong the scripture that we've read in the book of psalms says be strong you know it's not easy when you you are waiting because you are waiting and you don't understand when is this thing going to happen because sometimes god does not tell us everything 
you know, with the children of Israel. He just told them, how are you going to go to the land of milk and honey? But he didn't tell them of what the things that they were going to go through. And I always ask the Holy Spirit, why didn't God tell them that they're going to meet the Red Sea? God, the Holy Spirit says it's not important. There are certain things that God will not tell us because it's not important. You know, when you're waiting, God cannot tell you, hey, hey, you're going to meet this boy. He's going to break your heart. Then you move to relationship number two, number four, number five. Hey, sometimes it's number 18. God does not say anything. You will keep on doing your things. Why? Because you are impatient. And when you're not patient, I'm telling you, we tend to make a lot of mistakes. We tend to make a lot of mistakes. I have seen with the children of Israel, you know, they were supposed to wait upon God, taking them through the journey of going to the promised land. But hey, during the time when they were supposed to get to the promised land, there they were complaining to Moses. Moses, you know, where I come from, it was better. Sometimes we feel like before I became a Christian, it was better because I could date anyone, anyhow, anytime. But now there's a lot of restriction, you know, you must wait upon God. You must find this type of a person and everything else. Da, 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 da. A lot of things that you can think of. But I'm saying it's not easy to wait, but it's required. Why? Because God says, I give the best. He says, can you ask me? for something and I don't give you what you want. He says, I know what to give you. When your child asks for a fish, you cannot give them a snake. God gives the best. You, if you are in a waiting period, you are waiting for something. I want to talk to you. Be strong. Do not be discouraged because God is going to act. And the way God is going to bless you. Yes, people will be talking to say, hey, now you're 35. Hey, the clock is ticking. Hallelujah. God says one day to me is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day to me. So, you know, God's time frame is not on the agenda of what people you know god says my ways are not your ways my thoughts are not your way your thoughts sometimes when you're waiting we've got an idea on how god is going to do things you know with me i've always thought i'm gonna get a job it's not gonna be difficult i'm just gonna apply i'm gonna apply the word of god i'm gonna fast and as much as i was fasting there were people who were calling me people that i was praying with for jobs they were getting jobs but as for me i was not getting one but you know what I did? I will move from this company to the other, trying to get a job. But it was not a proper job. So even in relationship, I might be moving from this relationship to the other. It's not a, a proper one. Why? Because there's a certain time, there's a specified time, specifically assigned for you to get your man. But if you're not aware, you'll keep on trying. Why? Because you want uh, that moment to come now. Why? Because you'd see the pressure from other people. I believe when Hannah was sitting with Benina, looking at her, having children, you know, uh, she, the Bible says she had 10 sons and Hannah had none. Why? Because God kept her child. There are people who God will keep you away from certain things from his own purpose. Why? Because he wants to give you the best. The Bible says when we read Hannah, he, she only had a son, the firstborn by the name of Samuel. She dedicated him to the Lord. You know, when we read the Bible, we read much about Samuel. We read more about Hannah's children. But Penina, I don't even know their names, the ten sons. I don't even know their names. But with Samuel, I know Samuel and what he has done, the impact that he had in the kingdom, in the government, in the influence of selecting a leader, in the anointing that he had. Why? Because he was there to make a difference. Even you, when you're watching me, people are laughing to say, been, hey, you are 35, you are 36, you are 37, you've got a lot of ex-boyfriends. Let me tell you something. The fact that you've got lots of ex-boyfriends, you've went through the heartache, the pain, everything that a woman is supposed to go through. When you get that husband of yours, you're not going to be worried when he's outside or when he's doing other things. Why? Because you've been there. You know what it's like to be with a man. Hallelujah. You know the heartache. You know the pain. You are going to appreciate him. You are going to value the man that comes into your life. Why? Because you've been waiting for him for too long. Oh, hallelujah. You've been waiting for you for too long. He has been not been handed to you, you know, in a silver platter. No, he came and he came at the time when you needed someone. Sometimes you would have given up. You find that because you've been heartbroken for so many years, for so many times, when this new man come into your life, you won't even believe the things that he will do. You know, the day when I met my husband, ah, to tell you the truth, I, I was not prepared. I was not even looking for a husband that day. I just woke up, you know, just listened to, to the Holy Spirit saying, don't eat today. I think he wanted to reduce me from talking. Hallelujah. He wanted me to be humble. You know, when you're hungry, you're very humble. You're very understanding. So that day told me not to eat anything. I was not even 
even dress for the part when I met my husband. I'm telling you, the day when God gives you that blessing, you don't even have to try so hard. You see, right now you're trying so hard. We are telling, put on eyelashes. Hey, dye your hair blonde. Hey, do this. Hey, make up, girl. That's why they don't see you. No, God says it has nothing to do with that. It has had everything to do with the time that I've set for you. It was my time. It was the mature time for me to meet my husband. I was not even prepared. Even my hair... If I had another opportunity to reverse the day and do it again, I would love to do it again. I would have done something special, something different. I mean, even the time I would conduct, the way I would conduct myself in that prayer meeting would have been different. Hallelujah. But I didn't care. Even when I was there, I was just rolling, praying, praising the Lord without being aware that there's a man watching me, a man who's interested in me. Hallelujah. When I asked him today that what attracted you to me, he said the way you were praying, I felt God, you know, the way you were so serious in the presence of God. So what am I saying? Sometimes God will take you through a process. Sometimes God will take you through a process which requires you to wait. And when you're waiting, you don't understand. Why is it that my things are not coming together? I'm telling you one of the good days they're going to come together. All you have to do is to wait. It is not nice to wait. I must be honest. It is not nice to wait. But there are benefits that comes with it and you're not going to regret it. Wait upon God. Trust God that God is going to give me a good Good husband he's gonna give me a good husband hallelujah you keep on praying for the right man you keep on praying for the man that will love you and your kids, even if you don't have them. I remember myself taking a fast. It was a seven-day fast. I fasted for my husband. I fasted for my kids. I used to pray for my husband, even though I've never met him. I used to pray. Pray. Even when you when you're alone in a private room, that's why Jesus says when you pray, go to a private room, you close the door, you pray on your own. Pray and talk about things that you want to see, things that are being delayed in your life. There are different things that are being delayed. It could be jobs, it could be your prosperity, it could be you coming out of depth. You've been waiting for so many years to say that God, I've been in depth for too long and I've been waiting for you to take me out. Take me out. You said you're going to take me out. God can take you out. I'm telling you, I've learned from Peter. If you are in debt, God can take you out. He can definitely take you out. We were once in debt with my husband where we could not afford anything working but we could not afford. So the time when God came to took us out, we had to scale down. We had to move from a suburb. We went to a township in Soshanguve. We stayed there and our lives began to come to Sheb. Here we are today. We are back again in the suburbs. What am I saying? Sometimes it's good, you know, to scale down. It's good to listen to that voice. Don't listen to what people are going to say. The Bible says don't pay attention to everything that people are saying. As much as you're waiting upon God, try and check Holy Spirit, what is it that I can do to scale down? What is it that I can do to reduce the burden and the level of stress upon me? Why? Because I cannot take it anymore. In depth, you get to that level where no one can see you anymore. Why? Because now it's serious, you know. You find that they get paid today, the next day you don't have money. Those are certain, I'm still going to talk about it on another video. I'm going to share how I came out and how the Lord came through for me. But it's always good to wait upon God. Wait upon God. God will never disappoint you. The Bible says those who wait upon me, they will never be disappointed. They will never be discouraged. It might have taken me 10 years to have a job, but I'm working now in city planning. I'm enjoying myself there. You know, I'm working. I have the money that I've always wanted. One day of favor that comes with God, reward of you waiting upon God is going to change your life forever. You might be crying today, I don't even have TV, I don't even have this, I don't even have that. The type of job that God is going to give you in one salary, you're going to buy everything. The car that you don't have today that you're crying for, God is able to give it to you in one day. He is the God that performed miracles. You know, the Bible says when Peter was in jail, God broke the protocol. He did not even talk to the police guard to say, take out the dog and I want to take Peter out. The Bible says the angel of the Lord came through a wall. That is how God is going to come through for you. He's going to come through a wall. He's going to break all the, the protocol. He's going to send an angel from, he from heaven to come and take you out from your situation. Why? Because you've been waiting upon God. The Bible says uh, Sarah and Abraham could not wait upon God. Now they brought this third person by the name of Hagar, who brought so many problems and headache. Don't do your own things, you know. Don't just say, because my friend is getting married, now just fall in love with this person that I don't love. There are people who are under pressure. They married people that they do not love. And today, as they speak, they are divorced or they're miserable. Hallelujah. And they've made a lot of mistakes. You know, Sarah made a mistake. But God said that during the time when you're 99, that is the time you're supposed to fall pregnant. But when she was looking at the watch, 
That's why God says you do not walk by sight, but you walk by faith. You walk by faith. You walk by faith. Let me repeat it again. You walk by faith, not because Rebecca is getting married tomorrow. You work by faith, not because this one is working. You work by faith, not because this one has got money. You walk by faith. By faith, by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. This is the word of God. The book of Joshua says this must not depart from the lips. Hallelujah. Because this is the kite line of where God is taking you to. I want to tell you one thing for sure. If you are waiting upon God, keep on waiting. God will never disappoint you. God will never disappoint you. He's not a human being. He loves you. I love you. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for my dear sister and brother that is waiting upon you. Father, I pray that God give them the strength. They said, said Lord God in your way that we must be strong. Help them to be strong as much as they're waiting. Holy Spirit, bring more clarity, bring more understanding. Father, I come against the plans of the devil, of the enemy, of shifting them from their focus. I pray in the name of Jesus and rebuke the devourer. I rebuke the enemy. I rebuke the devil. Father, I close their ears from anything that has not come from the Lord. Father, as they're waiting upon you, I pray that give them the patience to be able to wait for the right time that you have set for them. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, I declare success. I declare prosperity upon their lives in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. I love you. Amen. God bless you.